Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and this is a closing market wrap for Monday, September 30th, 2019. This video will largely be a recap of the video I published earlier uh, this morning for members of the site. Uh, it will have the you know same 60-minute charts. I'm looking at the 15-minute charts daily. And uh, what I'll do in that video, I laid out a scenario which so far has played out. Um, or at least started to play out. I'm going to go over that real quick. And I'll go ahead and re I'll release that video now on the YouTube channel uh, as soon as I'm done with this one for um, public viewing uh, since it's you know no longer time sensitive. Intraday updates are, are going forward and have been in for a while now. Limited to subscribers, but uh, since that one was just general market analysis, plus I did cover, there is a benefit to watching that one. I covered the uh, at least the top five FANG stocks, FAAMG, Facebook, Amazon, Alphabet, Microsoft, and uh, which one did I leave out? Uh, Alphabet I already covered, that's the G. Always throws me there. Anyways, those five big uh, market leading stocks and uh, three of which broke out today. Apple was the big one. Apple had the clearest breakout. Here, I'll show you that real quick since I'm going to release that video. Uh, there's Apple broke out on the 60-minute time frame here. This nice little symmetrical dri uh, triangle pattern. Uh, more so, it's this downtrend line here. There's your downtrend line. There's your uptrend line. Still above uptrend, and it broke above uh, this downtrend line. So that was a catalyst for the 2.35% rally in Apple today is that breakout. Gapped above it and never looked back. Built on those gains and uh, and also took out this level. Still hasn't taken out that previous high, but that's one to watch. And again, there was also, um, we'll, go, you know, we'll run through them real quick here. Let me tell you which ones since that video, uh, since they hadn't broken out yet at the time in the video. So we had Apple, a Microsoft still above trend, Alphabet uh, still above trend right here, still has divergence. That one could break down. I'm telling you, there's a, I'm seeing a mixed bag of technicals here. Oh, there it is. Alphabet, uh, or no, Amazon. This is Amazon broke out of that 60 minute trend line, divergent low. Uh, not, not a very impulsive uh, follow through on the breakout. So that's one to watch. And then uh, Facebook as well, but again, not impulsive. I had this downtrend line I covered in that video earlier today. And so you can see a breakout in Facebook, but really no follow through at all. And uh, again, divergence there. So again, this is a, I think it's a very interesting time. I mean, the common theme to just sum it up in a couple sentences, I see uh, quite clearly bearish technical postures. Uh, a lot of stocks sitting on the verge, some already breaking down as I covered in that video earlier today, uh, like you know Facebook, for example, and Amazon, both already down off their highs about what is 16% or so at the recent lows, and uh, in clearly bearish technical postures. Again, I'm probably getting off on a tangent now. I told you I wouldn't cover these again, but I just look at this and I see there's that, you know, this is what the indexes look like to me. And this is XLK and everything else. You have the trend lines off the lows on December 24th. This one held here, held here, broke down, back tested, back tested, and it's been moving lower. Uh, however, you have these bullish divergences here. So I'm telling you, I think the market is at a, a level where it can go either way. If these bullish divergences, and I showed you in that earlier video, Amazon has an almost, almost identical chart. It broke down as well, but it has positive divergences on the 60-minute to daily charts, which could lead uh, for another rally, maybe another back test here. And if so, now these two, Amazon and Facebook, are the laggards of the FANG stocks, but um, that would play into this scenario of a marginal new high. And, um, you know, I don't like coin toss odds. I like odds clearly skewed to one side or the other. So, you know, I'm keeping it kind of light right now in the uh, active trading account. Hit and run, a lot of active trading there. And, um, make you know, still short in uh, most of my long-term accounts, IRAs, you know, swing trade accounts uh, from back here. That was in our last short entry on QQQ. And look at where we're at. We went profitable immediately, back to break even, profitable again. Uh, slightly underwater and we're back to break even right about where we close today so this is a go nowhere market and I still maintain minimal upside is what I see at best if if these 60 minute bullish divergences wedge patterns play out uh, that's what I see is just a you know limited upside of a maybe uh, from here I have to change the numbers every day because we go up and we go down but about five maybe six percent give or take and it wouldn't surprise me in the least to see uh, this market break down any day now. And again, uh, you know, solid break below Friday's lows 
should do the trick. You still have the 200 day and some other levels to contend with, um, but that's that's what I'm looking at bigger picture. And I'm trying to give you the near term stuff. I know it's can be confusing, but these are levels to watch. It really shouldn't be. You know, it's simple. You go below, break down below these levels. You open the floodgates. If you break support, you head to the next lower levels. And uh, here's uh, SPY. I mean, this is really important right here. SPY already back tested the uh, top of the the uh, August trading range uh, had really two tests and a perfect test right down there. Didn't leave any unfinished business when it slightly undercut 294 on Friday. And he moved out back into that range. It's not a good. It's it. That's not a good sign technically. It's good if you're short. Good if you're bearish. Not good for the if you're long. And of course, then you have the trend line as well, just below it, coming off the uh, 24th. Uh, 24th of December as well. So those are all, um, you know, more important levels to watch on the daily chart. Now let's go back to the world of the uh, intraday charts and we'll wrap it up here. All right. So earlier in today's earlier video, I'm going to zoom in here. This is SPY 60 minute chart. We were below uh, the, the falling wedge patterns I have on SPY, ES, NQ, QQQ, all those. And what I had said is uh, if SPY were to break out, and I was leaning that way, I said if SPY were to break out, it will most likely run up here to 297.50. That's a very, very decent uh, resistance level. And a back test of this trend line, this minor uptrend line here. So I said go up here hit that level. I said I, I had started a short here and I said I would add to shorts if it got there and that's what I did. So that's just active trading stuff. And we got the pullback so far. I uh, said so we we'll probably come in to at least back test this trend line. Now you can see we already hit the first support on the back test before the close. This, this chart shows as of today's close, 296.61. Um, but tomorrow I'm leaning towards a backfill of this gap. At least come test the top of the gap these are the gap lines right here. This is today's gap. And that's where I think SPY comes. And if so that'll be a failed breakout. And um, yeah, you'll still have the divergence. And let's look at the 15 minute chart as well. There it is. That's, I think I might have showed it on this 15 minute chart. So there is a possibility. Look, if we fail and we come back in here, and let's say we do, uh, there's, let me show you the gaps again. Here's, here's the gap right here. There's the top of today's gap, the bottom. And so let's say the SPY comes in to fill this gap tomorrow. Here's what we'll do. We'll lift this line up, cover today's highs where we failed, uh, and now that just gives you a bigger wedge. And this is where I'm leaning towards. Um, I think this, you know, we do have the 60-minute divergent low, and that could certainly play out for a much larger rally. But I'll tell you what, I, what I'm leaning towards, and it would be this. Uh, come on in, you know, and tomorrow at least come down here, come visit that gap, possibly even take it down. We could make another run at Friday's lows, even slightly undercut them, and uh, charge up some more uh, bears, you know, get some more shorts sucked in, and stay within this falling wedge pattern right here. Now, it, it, the bottom line, remember, when I draw a wedge pattern, uh, the bottom line on a falling wedge is my divergence line. It's not so much, it's not as important as a trend line as the uptrend line because that triggers our buy signal on the breakout. So what I'm getting at here is if we pop down lower like this, undercut those lows from Friday sometime soon this week, uh, and as long as we, we pull this trend line lower, the divergence line, as long as the divergence stays intact, that still sets the stage for potential reversal. Now, should we go much lower than that and, uh, you know, these divergences are taken out, and that's probably what would happen. You know, if we break down below Friday's lows and really dump, we're going to take out these divergences, and that is going to be pretty bearish if it happens. So these are the levels to watch. Uh, as of now, let's just keep this trend line down here because that's where we had the reactions today. You know, Or we can leave this one that I had earlier and look for a back test tomorrow. I'll just put it like, you know, I'll leave both. Let's just do this so I don't forget to cover this in tomorrow's video. And that's the 15-minute chart. And again, here's how it looks on the 60-minute chart uh, right there. That blue line, that's 294. That's the uh, top of the August trading range. And on QQQ, one reason, that, you know, in the video earlier today, the reason I predicted that uh, SPY would fail after that breakout and fail at that level is is where QQQ and NQ and ES and all those were at the same time. So what I said is SPY, because SPY was poised to break out. So I said if SPY breaks out 
right about the time it got to that level where it topped today, QQQ would hit this trend line, and that is exactly what happened. This I have not modified. Here's that trend line, QQQ. At the same time, SPY top, QQQ hit trend downtrend line resistance. And this is why I say if you are a SPY trader or QQQ trader or you trade XYZ, any of the indexes, you want to watch them all. You want to watch QQQ, SPY, ES, and NQ. I mean, there's others out there, but you can trade the Dow. You can trade the, you know, I, that's, I like these two. And the point being that you need to watch them all because you had that breakout in SPY, but yet at the same time, ES, NQ, and QQQ all hit resistance, and that's what caused the reversal today. So it wasn't a very, it was not a very big reversal today, but it was resistance. We need to respect it. On QQQ, I could pull this trend line in. That's where I had it before. I could put it right there and say breakout in a back test, but it's not a very impulsive breakout. Uh, one of the criteria that you want to see, ideally, for a breakout doesn't have to happen is an impulsive move following the breakout and a, an impulsive not just in price but an increase in volume as well so we didn't have an impulsive breakout there and so that's why I'm going to leave that trend line where I have it right now that's what QQQ needs to pop tomorrow and uh, you can see here if you kind of just visualize all those other lines here I'll make them go away for you uh, let's just show you this is what we could be looking at here so we'll watch this here's our downtrend line in QQQ uh, we certainly have divergence which could be the catalyst for a rally now um, but we can also work our way down here and that's what I favor and uh, even if this wedge is going to break out so that's why uh, at this point this is where I'm looking at tomorrow whether it's in the futures tonight or tomorrow a little more downside um, and then we'll continue to watch this. Um, but like I said, you got to be quick and flexible in this market. If maybe this wedge starts to set up and never materialize. If we dump to the bottom, like I said, this would not be bull market action. All these wedges I've seen for the past, you know, years, except we're in some you know very vicious correction modes, 2015, 2016. Uh, I don't think I saw any wedges like this in the fall of uh, 2018. But usually these are the get ready to get long. In fact. Um, you know, if we didn't have all the negative uh, divergences, other other cracks that are showing in the market on the daily and weekly time frame, I'd probably just start scaling in long down here within the wedge in anticipation of a breakout. So that that's where we're at, and those are my thoughts. And here's that wedge on a 15-minute time frame. You can see, again, unimpulsive breakout. If you look at it that way, back testing, or you can move the line up there, however you want to do it. Six to one half dozen dollars. It's not a convincing breakout, that, that I will say. Uh, now, we could gap up tomorrow. If we do, the levels to look for, uh, whether we break out of this, you know, uh, this wedge today or it did break out today or if we do tomorrow uh, pretty significant resistance there at about 190.17 you can see all the lines here I think they're still valid let me look at these I don't uh, yeah okay I don't need to update these these are these are all the potential targets and um, you know should we come back down there that would be a backfill about 187.19 give or take that's not exactly on um, yeah Friday's close but close enough so that's that's what I'm leaning towards is a another thrust down here and if so maybe I'll just go like this we'll move that line up a little bit make this the wedge uh, to watch going forward this week and whether we'll see how this plays out and finally let's look at the futures uh, those are the charts I posted on the site covered as well uh, there it is earlier today when we uh, stopped and reversed in the indexes uh, ES this, I should have mentioned that this is ES the S&P 500 futures 60 minute time frame if I don't mention it's right up here in the uh, upper left corner uh, right when the market topped ES had hit this two uh, 29.84.75 so we'll call it 29.85 we'll round up resistance had a pullback powered up and look this is why I'm doing this video and this is why as of this moment I'm short uh, like I said I would be when we got there added on and we'll be going home short um, with a stop somewhat above here because we have ES at resistance and even though you have to be careful you know uh, going short following a big divergent low like this so that's why I'll have stops not too far above uh, and again it'll be not dependent on any one thing before I shut down for the night I'll have hard stops in right now I'm watching everything and uh, NQ as well let me show you that oh no I don't want to do that I already have a chart of NQ here's NQ okay and again same chart posted earlier same trend lines even covered 
that's it. We hit that trend line today almost perfectly uh, at the highs. We pulled back and now we're there again at this point. See we have a reaction high here. Let me uh, tighten this trend line up a little bit. Okay, that's close enough. Uh, so well, here's what I'm watching. We have NQ at downtrend line resistance uh, right now. There it is. There's our downtrend line. Remember NQ has been in a series of uh, lower lows and lower highs so far. Um, although, so that's the current trend is bearish. Although these divergences here uh, indicate uh, a likely trend reversal soon. And uh, again, until and unless they're taken out. So I'm um, leaning this way. Any upside break, which could come in the overnight session. And again, that's why uh, I'll have stops not too far above here for a quick pullback short trade. This would be the next target in NQ about uh, next resistance 78, 46, 47 ish right there. Uh, although this is uh, the way I'm leaning right now. Not with the highest convictions, but enough to have a trade. If I didn't have, you know, that wasn't leaning that way, I wouldn't even have a trade on. And again, it's about, you know, objective, you know, keep a tight stop for a pullback, especially if we come down in this wedge, I'll probably just trail down. Uh, I don't see any solid, you know, we have some minor supports right here, but I think the best thing to do would be to trail it down and uh, or target this reaction low right here. In fact, I'm gonna, yes, I'm gonna add a line right there. I think this is what I'll target if we get this pullback tonight. Right about here, 7708, just a hair north of that level. And then that would give us something like that. Pull back to there and maybe continue to develop this wedge a little more um, before going on to break out. And of course, you know, should it be anything more than that, we'll watch these divergences. We'll watch support. Friday's lows, as I mentioned, is a, a, a big level. And as well as just below that, we have about 7306. Anything much below that, we probably just open the door to big, big waterfall type sell off, I think, in the market. So uh, we'll see. Well, like I said, we're not far above. Uh, you know, right now, this is the closest level to watch because we're at resistance. And uh, should we come back in the wedge? I just gave you some levels to look at, and we'll pick this up uh, tomorrow. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed it.